Hi, this video is part of a course on food physics. The porous media framework that we are discussing is part of the theory section. And this video is a subsection on the governing equation for transport. The immediately preceding video the immediately preceding video is on the mechanisms of transport in food as uh, porous media. And the immediate follow-up video is going to be on mass transport in food as porous media. Hi. Before getting into flow in porous media, I want to say just a little bit about a flow in a simple continuum. In a simple continuum, the flow governing equations we are used to in our first course in fluid mechanics are derived from momentum conservation, momentum conservation and rate laws. In this case, the rate law given by Newton's law of viscosity. These give us, together they give us the governing equation for the system. These are the Navier-Stokes equations that um, we are often familiar with. So these are the Navier-Stokes equations that we just referred to and these equations would be solved to obtain the velocity, the three components of the velocity. Uh, they're very general. They're valid for any laminar flow and for Newtonian fluids. So pretty much most of the flow situations that we deal with for simple cases can be uh, solved by three by these three um, equations uh, so they are very very general so of course they work also for porous medium as shown here they work for porous medium except that a real porous medium does not look anything like this it's a lot more complicated in terms of how tortuous it is and the size distributions and so on so much so that it is completely impractical to try to solve Navier-Stokes equations for a porous medium. So instead what we do is we, have, we use a simplified equation called Darcy equation for the porous media. Just like the Navier-Stokes relates velocity to pressure gradient, here this Darcy equations also relate velocity through pressure gradient. That's the velocity of the fluid going through the porous medium is related to the pressure gradient. Now, I want to make sure we all see this, that this equation is not independent of the Navier-Stokes equations on the left. In fact, if we think of porous media as simple bundle of tubes of different size, so these are tubes of different size, if we think of the porous media as uh, this kind of a simplified form, then for that the Navier-Stokes equations we can easily show that their solutions become in the form of the Darcy equation or we can derive the Darcy equation from Navier-Stokes for such very simplified case. So the point being that we are going to use Darcy equation for fluid flow in porous in a porous medium, that is a replacement 
of the Navier-Stokes equations that we would normally use to describe fluid flow. We will soon look into the Darcy's law that we just introduced in a lot more detail. But before that, let's get a more uh, physical understanding of uh, the velocity that Darcy's law uh, gives us. So when fluid flows through porous medium, of course, it flows through the pores. It flows through the pores and not through the solid. But depending on the pore sizes and many other uh, structural factors, we're going to get all kinds of velocity. This is very hard to handle. So how we handle flow through porous media is using what's called a superficial velocity. That's what Darcy's law gives us. So Darcy's law gives us this U, superficial velocity, which is a velocity that is over the entire surface area. So not through the pore space. It is through the entire surface area. So this superficial velocity, of course, is not going to be same as the velocity through individual pores. So let's play with this superficial velocity a little bit more. So the velocity u is really also volumetric flux because we just said the velocity u in meter per second is over the entire area. So that u multiplied by meter square gives me meter cube per second flow. So meter cube per second coming out and meter cube per second coming in. So if meter cube per second is the entire flow, then the volumetric flux instead of volumetric flow is going to be this meter cube per second uh, divided by meter square, which is again meter per second. So the meaning of this superficial velocity is also volumetric flux. So we often need mass flux in our equations that we're going to develop for porous medium. And this mass flux would be given by density multiplied by the velocity. So we have u as meter per second, which is really meter cube per meter square per second. So if we want to multi if we want to get mass flux, we multiply this by kg per meter cube. So if I multiply kg per meter cube, then meter cube cancels and I get kg per meter square per second. So mass flux. So mass flux is going to be rho times u. This is something we will use again and again. We just have to remember the meaning of u which is a superficial velocity or it's a velocity that is measured in terms of the entire cross-sectional area. You can think of it's an averaged over the entire cross-sectional area. Now we get into more details of the Darcy's law for flow through porous media. Darcy's law gives us this velocity u through a porous media by this equation. So here is the velocity u. So remember this is the superficial velocity and it is also the same as volumetric flux because it's meter cube of water going down per meter square of the entire area, entire area uh, per second. So flux as related to the driving force, that is the pressure gradient. And this is exact same form as we had for Fourier's law for heat transfer, where heat flux is proportional 
to the temperature gradient that is the driving force and then Fick's law that is mass flux diffusive flux is proportional to the concentration gradient now in just like in these laws the constant of proportionality related the law to the exact material like Fourier's law this is the thermal conductivity of the material and in this case Fick's law it is the diffusivity of the particular species through the other species and and so just like that uh, Darcy's law also has to relate to the actual materials so how much stuff flows of course has to depend on how big the pores are what is the nature of the pores and so on so that matrix aspect is brought in through permeability of the matrix which has to be measured of course and the fluid part you know water would not flow the same way as oil so the fluid part is brought in through viscosity and of course viscosity has uh, these units so viscosity gives the fluid part fluid part and uh, permeability gives the the solid matrix aspect of it all together then we have the volumetric flux or the velocity is equal to all those uh, constants the ratio of them multiplied by the pressure gradient again that velocity that we get is the superficial velocity or the volumetric flux and rho times u is the mass flux that we're going to use again and again now it's not always going to be that the pore is completely filled with just one kind of fluid uh, for example you could have uh, the pore filled with uh, water and water and vapor and if there is one phase more then the other phase would be less so how do we handle uh, when you have multiple phases uh, that actually it's not that difficult is we say the permeability of a phase is equal to whatever was the intrinsic permeability that's the permeability we discussed in the previous slide multiplied by some sort of relative permeability so this relative permeability has to do with how much of this material in this case the water is in the pore if there's more water the relative permeability is more and there are relationships like that we're not getting into these details here that is discussed in the properties module but the important thing is we can adjust for the amount of water flow if there is more gas then there would be less water and that will show up through the relative permeability likewise for vapor then the gas permeability is also there's an intrinsic permeability for the vapor multiplied by the relative permeability of the the gas and so again there is going to be there is a complementary re relationship uh, for the gas relative permeability with the water relative permeability that's not the point here the point is when we have multiple phases like water or vapor we know how to handle because the permeabilities would get adjusted by the relative permeabilities so to summarize flow through food as a porous medium due to pressure as a driving force whether it's water or vapor 
or air is going to be uh, given by Darcy's law. So this is my Darcy's law and that with that we can account for gas pressure driven flow of water or gas pressure driven flow of vapor or air and uh, if there is any flow due to gravity. So we now have a good grasp of the convection term for water and other gases.